Hey, Troy. What? Smell my finger, Mel Meninga. Mmm, what you got there? Garlic. Mm. Nice? Nice. About a kilo more. Mmm. It's a bit too much for one meal. Breakfast, lunch, dinner? Yeah, sounds good. I think no one's going to go near me. Yeah, true. Least of all me. Ah! <laughs> Let's do five ways to preserve garlic. Yum. G'day. Welcome to Aussie Homesteading. I'm Troy. And I'm Emily. And today we are... We're going to do a video of five different ways to preserve garlic. So, Yum. Hmm. Well, you would say that. This guy munches on garlic all the time. It keeps the flu away. It does. That's true. Um, one thing that we will do a video that isn't in these five things is um, using dehydrated garlic, grinding it down, and making your own garlic tablets. Yep. Um, so we give them to our kids and ourselves, and we pretty well stem off flu. But uh, this video is five ways to preserve garlic that you can use to consume. Um, the first one we're going to do is pickling. Um, and then we're going to can it, so uh, that'll seal it, and it will just be water bath canning, and that will um, keep for years. I've already made the pickling mix, which is equal vinegar and water, and into each cup of um, liquid in total, I've done a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of sugar, um, and I'm going to be adding other um, spices. Here in Australia, um, the Hoyts do... Um, a lot of the seeds that you get in your supermarkets, I'll be using mustard seeds and pickling spice, which is a nice combination. And I may put a bay leaf in. This is just my little pickling pack that I use. A pretty traditional Australian pickling taste from that. Okay, the second one is minced garlic. Now, very convenient, store in the fridge. Means you don't have to sit there chopping it every time you want to use it. Versatile, can use it in literally anything you're cooking. Um, and in that sense, you don't really want anything that's adding any flavour to it, like the pickling one. So um, what we do is uh, we dice it to a consistency that we like because mm -hmm. when you're buying the store purchase ones, it's a lot more liquidy than we actually like. And yeah. it kind of dissipates through the food. You're not actually getting to crunch on that garlic, which is a good sensation. That's what we enjoy. We enjoy doing that. Um, so we just mince it to a consistency we like and then put olive oil on the top. The third way we're going to do today is brining. Um, and that's going to just be um, uh, water and salt. And into a cup of water, you're putting a tablespoon of salt. Um, it's very salty, but the reason I use a tablespoon to a cup ratio is because it stores for a very long time. And in partnering with water canning as well, um, literally it can last for years um, so I've already prepared that the same as I've pre already prepared the pickling mix um, just to save time on camera I've also already prepared the brine solution and I've used uh, pink Himalayan salt it's important that you're using a non-iodized salt so and that doesn't matter which kind of salt you use um, as long as it's non iodized recipes will be down in the uh Description. Yes, as always, all of our videos, uh, everything that we do recipe wise will be written down there for your convenience so you can just sit back and watch. You don't have to sit there trying to write it out. Um, our fourth method, method is going to be uh, dehydrating. Um, I've got some here. This was the oldest one I could find in my cupboard, which was um, garlic done in February of 2014. Oh, I can't even open it. Can you? Oh, there we go. So I take it, and oh, I'll do it so you can hear hopefully, it is literally crispy. Now, Troy has also been known to eat these. Yeah. Um, but that's been when we haven't had any other form in the house, and it's still as beneficial to knocking back a cold or the flu um, as any other form of garlic. Yeah, definitely. So all the nutrients are contained in it. Um, so that's very good. And our 
fifth method we're going to do is fermenting and that is done basically in uh, brine as well um, with the we we home make our fermenting vessels 12 and a half mil hole drilled in the top for the grommet to fit into just make sure the edges are not sharp and airlock slides in and then I know this isn't the right jar yeah it is. should fit yeah they're interchangeable I think not that one that was this one there we go tight seal and then once you finish fermenting you can just use one of the other lids from the same size jar and you're good to go um, so we will get started on this. Yep. Um, I am going to get Troy to do a lot of the cutting. So I'm going to move this across and he can choose his size of mincing. And I'm just going to quickly, um, yep, we've already sterilized. Now, normally in a canning procedure, you're using the oven or you're boiling off your bottles. As we are also brewers, we have all the proper sanitizing uh, food grade sanitizing liquids so uh, we're just using that today because we're about to do another brewing video so uh, we've already made a bucket of sanitization for that and this is certainly well and truly acceptable uh, to, to do for sanitizing your vessels so the first thing we'll do is just work out how much garlic we want for example, this is going to be our fermenting one. I'm only doing a small sample. Um, probably call that it for our fermenting one. Um, and our small one, we're going to use one for minced garlic. And I'm going to do two pickling ones. So the pickling ones, the only reason um, I'm doing two is purely because... Um, we tend to go through it, so anything pickled, we um, just kind of go to the fridge and just grab a little bit out. Yeah. And believe it or not, pickling garlic, sliced very thin, put on your jacks with your cheese and salami or whatever else you're having. It's a bit like pickled onion, but it's got that bit of garlic flavour. So what I'm doing is, I'm only taking the garlic, and I'm reasonably, they're reasonably tight, and you just want to make sure that they're push down a little bit but still a little bit loose because you do want the liquid to go through them and I'm just taking them to that first rim so and all we do for this is take our liquid and make sure that it covers the garlic now garlic is one of those things that tends to rise um, and because we're uh, you know so for example in the fermenting one um, I'm going to use um, some carrots or you could use a cabbage leaf just to help hold that garlic down so that it's not floating. Um, because we're canning this um, and you need to leave head space, it's actually okay just that this garlic's floating a little bit. Um, I haven't had any problems with that whatsoever. So I am just going to put just random a little bit of mustard seeds onto both of these. A little bit of the pickling spice. And I will, because I do like a bit of a bay leaf in there, so I'm just going to put a couple of bay leaves into each one. And we're going to put the lid on in a minute, and we're going to shake them up, make sure that everything's covered. Now, water bath wise, um, just have them going for 10 minutes, um, bring them out and um, leave them on the counter and as you know they'll pop down and once they've popped down and completely cool, you can store them in the pantry or fridge if you've got space. So all we're doing is just making sure that everything is covered in pickling brine and that's it for the pickling brine. Um, and then we're going to do a salt brine. So once again, just filling up our jar and this time we've uh, only got our water and salt mix 
same thing. And the beauty of the water and salt brine canning is that it can be used in literally anything. You can still cook a spaghetti with it, um, a chicken dish, whatever it is that you're actually cooking, isn't going. It's only going to have this, a bit of saltiness to it. It's um, so you've got the salt preservation and you've got the canning. So obviously, once it's open, you're going to need to store them in the fridge, as with anything, any canned product. But um, I actually go through this quite a lot. And we have a lot stored when you can get these bags cheap they're not always available but when they are available um, especially if one's reduced we always grab them and just quickly process them um, would I be able to have another lid for this please yep. thank you so now we've got two pickling jars and a brine now with the fermenting um, I'm going to use the same brine that I've used for the canning one over there. You can probably put some more in there. Uh, we may, but I'm just doing this at this stage because of the dehydrating. Oh, I forgot. Yes, the dehydrating as well. So, um, can I have the lid for this? <laughs> so, uh, what we're going to do is just hold this down. Now, if it turns out that I've got more garlic after I've done a tray for the dehydrating, or however much I need, um, and the point is, I already have a, you know, a shit ton of dehydrated garlic. Um, so I'm only going to just make one tray today and the rest of it I'd rather have um, for my needs as fermented and brine. So what I'm going to do is just show you how to hold it down. Just use a carrot and pop it in. And that's just helping way down any of the garlic and keeping it in the solution because um, any that pop up uh, are at risk of growing mold and um, we don't want that obviously so I just weigh it down and I'll just whack that last piece on top could I have the lid please Thank you very much. Can I put this in first? Oh, no, sorry. And Bob's your uncle. Just making sure that it's sealed in, um, your lid's on tight, um, and three days, four days, you can come along and taste one, and you'll definitely uh, be able to already start tasting that fermentation. Um, you can at that point put a normal lid on it and put it in your fridge and start using it straight away. Um, however, you could leave it like this for a month if you wanted to and let it keep processing and it's only going to get stronger in flavour. So that's completely up to you but please allow it to be three to four days at a minimum. Um, and of course with the brine amount of salt being used that I've used as the brine, um, that's already helping to preserve anyway. So. Um, the other thing I was going to say is another way, I've used a very simple way of making brine for this, however you can use other method, methods such as using a little bit of solution, it's called a starter fermenting solution. So it could be a little bit of liquid of a product that's already fermented, it could be a little bit of um, whey that you've used for making cheese and that really kicks it off and um, it's a much more intense flavour as well. So if you have that. Um, well and truly I would use it. I'm not using it today because I wanted to show a way to get starting in fermenting. These are very simple methods as you can see. Um, I am just going to, Troy's almost finished that jar and in actual fact, once he's done this last little bit here mm -hmm. and put that in the jar, we'll just put the oil on. And now, then I'll slice up for dehydrating. Yes, and the minced garlic we're using a um, ball mason jar. Nice and chunky. Mm -hmm. And nice and handy. Pass the oil. Now any garlic on the edges, just bring it down. If anything's stuck, bring it down because you want to make sure that it's covered in the oil. And of course the bonus of this as well is that you can use that oil in your cooking anyway once the garlic has been used up. 
and um, use it as um, infused oil. So I'm just pushing it down and as you can see um, it's permeated through. I don't actually know if you can see that but I'm just going to top it up again now. All the air bubbles have come out and the garlic does stay down on its own in the oil. So, And there you go your own handy minced garlic in the thickness and shape that you like. So there's that one. And as you can see, Troy is just um, cutting the garlic in lengthwise. It's the way we like it. Um, and I'm sure everybody knows how to use a dehydrator, lining your trays and um, whack it on, wake up in the morning and you've got garlic that you can just chuck in the canner. And um, it smells so nice, the house. Yeah, waking up in the morning. <laughs> Trust you to love that smell. <laughs> anyway, that's our five ways to preserve garlic. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please comment in the comments below and we'll get back to you. Um, if you like our video, like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye. Try to smell my finger. <laughs> no, I don't think that one's a good one. <laughs> We're Australians, come on, it's funny. <laughs>